All right, so let's look at the four possible situations for a monopoly in the short run. Now, you have already seen these because when we first learned about market structure graphs, I pointed out, we did an entire video just on shutdown, operating at a loss, and profiting. And then we did another shorter video on zero economic profit or breaking even. These are the exact same examples because from the beginning of market structures, we have been dealing with the graph of the price taker with the downward sloping demand curve. So all we're doing right here is reviewing something that you have already learned. I'm just showing you how it applies to the monopoly. Okay. All right. So uh, up here, We've got this situation. Let's see if we can figure this one out. If you want to look at them, pause the video and see if you can figure out which one is the shutdown, which one is the profiting, which one's the zero economic profit, and which one is the operating at a loss. You should go ahead and do that and try that. Okay. But I'm going to start up here. Uh, this monopoly is going to decide to produce a quantity where uh, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And so this is going to be the profit maximizing quantity. And then we're going to go from there, we're going to go up to the demand curve and we're going to go over here and that is going to be the profit maximizing price. Okay. Uh, from there, we can determine what will the average total cost at that quantity be. And if we go to the average total cost curve here, we can come over and we can put ATC and we can also identify the average variable cost. And the average variable cost is going to be where the quantity intersects the AVC curve. And that's going to go over here. So that's AVC. And we can see very clearly in this graph, this large rectangle price times quantity, that's the total revenue. Average total cost times quantity, that's our total cost, which is smaller than our total revenue. Therefore, this rectangle up here is the profit rectangle. And we know this because in this particular circumstance, price is greater than average total cost, which is greater than average variable cost. Therefore, this is the profit situation. This monopoly is profiting. It is earning positive economic profit. If we come over here to this circumstance, we're going to go to where marginal revenue intersects marginal cost, which is right here. And we're going to come down here and that is going to be the profit maximizing quantity. And then if we go up to the demand curve, that's going to happen right here. Something very interesting is happening there. That is our profit maximizing price, P, pr price with a sub PM there. And that height is also where the average total cost curve hits quantity. And so what we have is a situation where average total cost is equal to price. So price is equal to average total cost. And that means this is the zero economic profit or break even situation. So you might be thinking, why is a monopoly breaking even if they can set their own price? Well, it just so happens because of their terrible cost structure, they are in a situation where their best price and their best quantity results in them not earning any economic profit. And so they're just going to keep chugging along with zero economic profit because that is the best that they can do. If they increase their price, they will make, they will then have a loss. If they lower their price and increase their quantity, they will also have a loss. The best they can do is break even. All right. So now let's come down here to this one. And if we go to where marginal revenue intersects marginal cost, here is our intersection and that makes this quantity the profit maximizing quantity. And if we take that up to the demand curve and then go over to the left, we have the profit maximizing price and the profit maximizing price is below average total cost. Look at this. If we take this, this quantity all the way up to the average total cost curve, that's up here. And when we come over from here, you can see that average total cost is greater than the profit maximizing price. But good news, it's the profit maximizing price is higher than the average variable cost. And therefore, this is a situation where average total cost 
is greater than price, but price, that's, an, oh, that's really tiny, let me write a different P there. Average total cost is greater than price, but price is greater than average variable cost, and therefore this monopoly, though it's losing money, this rectangle here where total cost is, is larger than total revenue. Here's the total revenue rectangle, here's the total cost rectangle, so this company is losing money. But it is covering all of its variable costs. Okay, and this rectangle right here represents the fixed costs that they are recovering. And because they're recovering some of their fixed costs, they're going to keep operating at a loss. So this one is going to be operate at a loss. Okay, that is this circumstance right here because their price, even though it's less than average total cost, it's higher than average variable cost. And so this monopoly is going to keep doing business. They're going to uh, recover some of their fixed costs, but they're going to keep doing business um, uh, because, like I said, they are recovering some of their fixed costs, even though they're losing money uh, overall. Their hope is that something will change with their costs or something will change with, uh, with the, the demand curve, which we'll get to later, okay? And that could put them back into a profiting position. Over here, this particular monopoly in this situation, here's where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, and this is their profit maximizing quantity. Go up to their price. Here is their price, their profit maximizing price. Really, it's their loss minimizing price, because check this out. Their, they, their price is lower than their average variable cost. Here's their average variable cost. And it's lower than their average total cost. And so if they continue operating, they will keep getting more and more of a loss because their, their variable cost is higher than their, than their revenues. And therefore, this is the situation because their average total cost is greater than their average variable cost, also greater than their price. This situation is a situation where they should shut down operations. And you might be thinking, wow, the electric company is going to shut down operations? No, this is not the electric company, I promise you. If the electric company was in this situation right here, somebody would swoop in and fix things and change things a little bit so that people can continue having electricity. Because if the electricity company shuts down, if that happens over here, then we're all out of electricity. We're all, we're all out of phones. We don't have laptops. You're not even watching this video right now because you have no electricity, okay? Um, but this is these are the same four situations, and this is how monopolies face them. All right, so now let's talk about monopoly in the long run. Well, let me remind you what the big difference was in perfect competition between the short run and the long run. Do you remember that in the long run, in perfect competition, that... If a perfect competitor was earning profit, that other businesses would enter the market, shift the supply curve, right? So here we go. Supply curve, demand curve. This is per in perfect competition. Here's the price because they're price takers. This is the equilibrium price that they're taking. If there is profit to be earned, other businesses will enter the market and shift the supply curve to the right, increasing supply and decreasing the price. And therefore, the profits that were being earned by the perfect competitor are eroded. They're removed. Why? Because of entry of new competitors. Well, let me remind you that in Monopoly, there are extremely high barriers to entry. And so in the long run, there is no entry of new competitors. That's because it's a monopoly. There is only one seller. Now, if something changes to where the market is no longer a monopoly, well, then it's not a monopoly anymore. And so we're not talking about monopoly in the long run. We're talking about something else. So because monopoly has no entry of new competitors, okay, their profits will not be eroded. Profits not eroded, which means that monopolies can earn economic profit in the long run. Can earn 
economic profit. Okay. Here's the second thing. The other big thing about the long run, remember, is that um, is that there are no fixed costs. Okay. Well, one of the reasons why monopolies can exist is because they have extremely high fixed costs. And they oftentimes never have or never they never come out of the short run because they always have fixed costs. They never come out of the short run because they always have fixed costs. And because they're constantly investing, they always have fixed costs, monopolies, generally speaking, don't have a long run. Monopolies don't have a long run. So here's what I'm saying is the idea of monopolies in the in the long run is that monopolies don't have a long run. We're not we're not going to talk about monopolies in the long run because they don't reach the long run. They're always operating with fixed costs. They're always uh, there's no entry of new competitors to erode profits, and therefore monopolies are always in the the one of the four situations that you just saw. Okay, they are either profiting. Or they're breaking even, but not because of new competitors. It's because of their cost structure. Or they are operating at a loss constantly. Or they are shutting down because they can't uh, they can't recover any of their fixed costs.